Hey, what's going on folks? Chris here with lazyfa.com. In this video, I wanna give you a quick walkthrough of everything you can do in the Insiders and Institutions tool with LazyFA. To get here is super simple. Just put a ticker in and get to the dashboard. And then once you're on the dashboard, click the menu and you can find Insiders and Institutions right here under the research section. And when you click on Insiders and Institutions, you'll end up here on the Insider Behavior tab. I'll preface this by saying that the Insiders and Institutions tool is still a work in progress. There are a few bugs throughout this tool, but for the most part, it works pretty well and you can still get some good information from it. As a long-term investor, you should be paying attention to what insiders and institutions are doing in the stocks that you own. Because typically, insiders and big institutional firms and hedge funds and things like that are not going to be the same type of trader that you would find on Twitter as a day trader, right? These investors are the, quote, smart money. So it's important as a long-term investor to know what the smart money is doing and know what insiders of the company are doing at any given time. And that's what this tool is really designed to give you is some insight into insiders and institutions and what their behavior is. So the insiders tab is really broken into two components. And the first component is the insiders transactions. And then the second component is the insiders holdings. When you first land on this page, you'll end up on the Insider Behavior tab. And what you have across the top is just a listing of the most recent insider transactions. So in this table, if you hover over the name, it will tell you what their title is. And then you have a date for the transaction, the type of transaction, how many units they purchased, what the price was, the value, and so on and so forth. And at the very bottom, there's a button to expand this down so you can get the entire list which in this case, there are a ton of them, but that button just gives you the ability to expand and contract the list of the most recent insider transactions. So pretty straightforward. One of the other useful things that you can get out of this insider transactions table is the transaction code. Um, typically you will only see things like whether it was a buy or a sell, unless you go and look at the filings. But if you look at Lazy FA, we actually track the transaction code as well. So we can see if it was an open market purchase, if it was an open market sale, if it was a conversion of a derivative security, or if it was a gift, uh, like this one here, G was a bona fide gift. So uh, we track the transaction code as well, which can be insightful and give you a little bit more information than just whether it was a buy or a sell. So that's the first table at the top here. And if we get to the bottom of it, the next table down covers the insider holdings and the insider holdings are broken into two components, which are derivative and non-derivative. So non-derivative is actual stock and derivative is things like options and restricted stock units and convertible securities and things like that. As in the other table above, you can hover over each one of the insiders here and get what their job title is there at the company, the number of units, and the value of those units. There's an expand button here at the bottom to expand and contract this table. And then any of these dates that are highlighted will open up the actual Form 4 filing or the Form 3 or Form 5, wherever it came from, uh, will open that up in the SEC website. Now, one thing to make note of here is that the insider holdings tables are arranged from highest to lowest in terms of units, whereas the insider transactions are organized by date. So keep that in mind as you're looking through. These are not the most recent transactions. They will be the most recent for each individual insider, but they're organized from highest to lowest in terms of the number of units. And at some point in the future, I'll probably make it so these tables are sortable, but for now it's a static table. They're arranged by the number of units that the insider holds. That way you have the biggest holders at the top of the table. All right, so let's get to the charts. Uh, these insider holdings tables are also represented on two different charts, one for non-derivative securities and one for derivative securities. So these are the top 10 holders of those types of securities. And these charts are interactive like the charts all across LazyFA. 
So what LazyFA does is collect all of the Form 3, 4, and 5 filings for every insider that reports for the company, and we aggregate those filings so that they have a total number of units and a holding level at any particular date and time. And then we normalize those dates so that they are lined up with the quarters. And that way we can track them side by side at any given point in time by normalizing the dates. We can look at what the insider distribution looked like at that point in time. Now, as you can see here, when you have a company like Amazon, where a huge majority of it is owned by one person, the names across the top are clickable so that you can remove that person and see what the rest of the company distribution looks like. And this makes things a little bit more insightful when you take off the huge holders, right? Like Steve Jobs or Tim Cook, right? The, the guys that own 75 or 80% of the company. Sometimes those people can make your charts difficult to read. So these items at the top are clickable if you wanna get rid of them and make things easier to understand and easier to interpret. So if you look at the dates on this chart at the top, you'll see that this is all as of 202831, which is in the future. And that's again because we normalize the dates so that we can plot the ownership over time side by side. So what you'll see when you hover over each one of these boxes is that this person, for example, as of 202831 had 87.85,000 units and the last filing was August 5th of 2020. Whereas this person has not filed since November 13th of 2007. But by tracking the fact that they have not filed since November of 2007, we know that they still have the same ownership because if they didn't, they would have to report it and we would have another filing. So what this allows you to do is look at any given point in time for any month or any quarter and see what the company distribution looked like at that time. So if we, right now we're looking at the current data, right? So this is the distribution of insider holdings in Amazon right now as we speak. If we wanna see what it looked like in 2015, we can go back to December of 2014 and click on that point and you can see the chart updates to show the distribution at that time. So you can see when one particular insider, for example, this person, Mr. or Mrs. Diego, I don't know this person, but uh, when they started selling off their holdings between 2014 and 2016, really it looks like throughout 2015 they were selling, uh, that changed the distribution of the ownership pretty significantly because we had Andrew Jassy acquiring shares that entire time and this person disposing of them. So it changed the distribution slightly. So you can hover over any point in time and click on these points and that will show you what the distribution looked like at that point in time. The derivative chart is laid out in exactly the same way. Everything works exactly the same. You can add and remove people from the chart. You can hover over the bar or line chart. These are switchable as well, by the way. Uh, if you change this to a bar chart, then uh, you can zoom in, you can pan and scroll just like any of the other charts on Lazy FA. So if you prefer to look at this as a bar chart instead, maybe that's easier for you to visualize, then you can change that here. And the functionality on all of these is exactly the same. If you click on one of these boxes, by the way, you can zoom in and center it. And then to reset it, just click on the most recent point. And as usual, uh, throughout Lazy FA, you'll find these little information bubbles. So if you ever have a question about what something is showing you, then hover over these little information bubbles and they will give you more info. All right, so that covers the Insider Behavior tab. Now let's go over to the Institutions tab and take a look at things there. So the Institutions tab gives you both a holdings summary broken down by security type. So it tells you how many holders of common shares there are, how many holders of fund units, call options, put options, and so on. So the number of units that those holders are holding and also the value of those holdings. So you have this holdings summary here on the left, which breaks down the holdings based on security type. And then you have the top holders by security type. So we can see by looking at this, by combining these two tables, 
There are 1,569 holders of common shares in Amazon stock. Those are institutional holders. They're holding a total of 25.78 million units valued at about $71 billion. And the largest holder of common shares is Jenison Associates, who is holding 2.71 million units valued at about $7.5 billion. So by looking at the two tables at the top, it just gives you a breakdown of what the institutional holdings look like in this company. In the next row down, you've got the ability to search 6,500 plus institutions in order to find a particular institution that you're looking for. So if you have a specific institutional investor that you're interested in and you wanna see what their holdings look like in the stock that you're analyzing, you can search 6,500 institutions here in this box. And the ones that will show up by default are the top holders of whichever security type you have selected here. So right now we have common shares selected and Jenison Associates is the top holder in this particular uh, security type. So we can see that they have currently 2.71 million units, which are valued at seven and a half billion dollars. We can also scroll down to see if they own any other security types in Amazon, whether they own fund units or call options or put options. So there's a chart for each different security type. And we can see here that Jenison only owns common shares, but there are some companies that, uh, some institutions that will own all sorts of different security types. If we look at Simplex Trading, for example, Simplex has common shares and they also have call options and put options. So those are shown here as well. Now Lazy FA does track this over time. So if we go back to Jenison Associates and look at their common share holdings, we can track those over time. And you also have the ability to put a different institution on each chart. So knowing that both Jenison and Simplex own common shares, we can actually compare them side by side and see what those look like. Now, as you can see here, the scales are different, right? You've got 8 million as a top over here and only 180,000 for simplex trading. So in that situation, it's usually better to switch both of these charts to use value instead of the units, because that gives you a much clearer picture of what the company is actually holding. Here we can see Jenison is holding seven and a half billion dollars worth of stock whereas Simplex is only holding about half a million. So that's a, a big difference. So all of these charts are interactive like all the charts on Lazy FA. Across the top, if you wanna look at a singular institution on all charts, you can select it in this box. If you want to plot different institutions for the same security type on different charts, you have that ability to select the different security types as well as the different institutions on all of the charts. And this box here at the top just gives you the ability to switch all of the charts back and forth between bar chart and line chart, and whether you're looking at units or actual value. Okay, so that's it for insiders and institutional behavior. Like I said, this tool is still very much under development. There are some bugs within it, but like most things on Lazy FA, it is a constant work in progress. It's always being improved and it's always being added to. So if you have any questions about this, if you have any questions about any of the other features on Lazy FA, or if you simply have a suggestion for something that would make it better, feel free to drop me a line in the comments and I will see you next time.